The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. I want to, uh, before we receive the morning tithes and offerings, just talk to you about this next week. Because when we were coming out of August, the Lord told me that this would be a September to remember. And I'm, yeah, I'm talking to the church. And I'm talking about your provision. That God would do notable things concerning provision for you this month. How many have already seen God do some amazing things? Somebody say, well, I'm still believing the Lord, Pastor. Well, you still got Monday. You have Tuesday. Well, you still got Sunday. I mean, we're not through Sunday yet. Anything can happen. You have Monday, you have Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So let's talk about this next week. Because a lot of times people focus on too far ahead. And I always tell people, why do you get distracted focusing on January and next June and whatever. We always take a day at a time and I take for the church one week at a time. Seven days, the next seven days. What is God gonna do between now and next Sunday morning? In that way, you focus your faith. Everybody say, focus my faith. faith. Which is very important. With the eye of the spirit, you can see what others can't. Now, of course, I come from Africa. We go into the bush and we look for animals and you have to have binoculars. Anybody worked a pair of binoculars? And you look around and you're looking at a distance and you can get a very powerful pair of binoculars. And then you have to kind of fine tune it. If you don't, everything's out of focus. Each each lens on the binocular has to be set for your eyes. And then you, you have to get the focal point. You have to get the place where you can fine tune it in because what might work for one person's eyes doesn't work for another person's eyes. So when somebody hands you a pair of binoculars, you have to reset it. How many know what I'm talking about? And so that you can focus in on what You are seeing, somebody said, well, do you see that? Somebody said, I don't see that. So each person has to put your focus in. Obviously, we focus on Jesus. We got our eyes on Jesus, amen. Peter had to do that when Jesus was walking on the water and he saw Jesus, he said, Lord, if that's you, let me come. Tell me to come to you on the water and Jesus said come he jumped out of the boat and started to walk on the water as long as he had his eyes on Jesus he was fine the moment he looked at the wind and the waves which were contrary he began to sink and that's what the enemy always comes with distractions of things in the natural on a daily basis. I know many of you look at the Donica and myself, you think we never have any problems or whatever, but you have no clue what is thrown at us on a daily basis that could get your eyes off of Jesus and onto the natural. Because the devil has the only playbook that he has which he comes with lying signs and lying wonders and symptoms and circumstances where suddenly out of the blue, you begin to hear stuff, oh, that's terrible news that just happened. The Bible even tells us that at destruction and famine, you shall laugh. So I know that I talk to people, they tell me some information about stuff and I start laughing. They say, why are you laughing? I say, because it's ridiculous because I'm not signing for that package and I'm not accepting any of that. I don't care what they say. I already know what God's word says. Can you say amen? Amen. 
and that's not God's plan for me and I'm not signing for it. I'm only signing for victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, the, well, the government said, Washington, D.C. said, well, the news said, well, the doctor said, well, the lawyer said, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker said, the, the car blew up. It doesn't really matter. God has another vehicle for you. Somebody said, this went wrong, that went wrong. There are many things that go wrong all the time, but many times when you look and see the hand of God, God always propels you into a better place than you were at the time when you had those things. Are you with me? So you have to have a resolve in your spirit and you have to have a focus for your eyes. It doesn't matter what comes your way, it's okay because God's gonna use this to catapult me, I'm gonna end up better. I'm gonna end up in a better place. I'm gonna end up with better circumstances. Can you say amen? Now, the last two weeks, I've been reading this passage of scripture and I can't get out of it uh, for when we receive the morning offering. Go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter five. Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 2, page 907, if you have the same Bible as me, which by the way, the Bibles will be here in October. Yeah. October Ministers Conference, you'll have the same Bible as me. <laughs> All right. Verse 2, do not be rash with your mouth, and let not your heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon the earth. Let, therefore let thy words be few. Everybody stop there for a moment and think about it. How many know that people have no problem with the shortage of words? If you listen, and I've traveled to 85 countries of the world, some people talk slow, some people speak fast. Spanish people speak very fast. I think that Spanish people can say more in a minute than anybody else can say in five minutes. Spanish people. Isn't that right? They just have a way of speaking many things. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, people are pointing. They go, yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost like everything's speeded up. So, that's not a problem when it's the word of the Lord, when it's victory, but it can be a problem when it's everything to do that's contrary to the word. Because that means you can get more negativity out in a minute then other people will get out in five minutes. And so what you have to learn is to do this. Close your mouth. Don't utter what you're thinking. My wife will know whenever I'm in a battle or whatever, I go very quiet. because you don't want to hear what I would say if I would say it. Because I learned in the early days, you know, you just run your mouth, blah, 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 you know. So don't be rash with your mouth. Everybody say, I'm not going to be rash with my mouth. He says, for the dream cometh through a multitude of business. You'll notice that the people that talk don't really do much business. The people that do business talk less. There's a lot of people want to talk about the business. Look how quiet it's getting there now. They want to talk about the business. But when you're busy, you don't have time to talk about the business. You're busy doing business. Are you with me? 
A lot of times people are talking, they're not really talking anything positive, they are moaning. They are moaning, they are groaning, they are grumbling, they are whining, they... Uh, they wear you out. Like you can only handle about an hour and then you need a vacation. Some people feel like that when they meet their mother-in-law. I don't, my mother-in-law is sitting here, right here, she's amazing. So I, so I never have that problem with my mother-in-law, amen. <laughs> A fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. And the problem with a fool is a fool thinks they know everything. Even if they don't know everything, they think they know everything. And when they think they know everything, they just tell what they think they know and they ramble on and on. Meanwhile, it's nonsense. Sometimes you have to say, uh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. I think there are many people in ministry today that <laughs> have come to me, and I'm talking about ministers been in the ministry many years, and they go off about the problem, and then I say, I'll talk nicely to them, and I'll just say, you know, yeah, I understand that, but, and they go right back to that, and they, brrr, they go, and then I say, I understand that, but listen to me, brrr, and then finally I go, shut up! Is he okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Shut up. You talk like one that is insane. Be quiet. And now, of course, the Lord has delivered them and done great things with them, and they say the greatest day of their life, obviously they came to the meeting, then were touched by the fire of God, but said the greatest day was when Pastor Rodney told him to shut up. People actually, they, their testimony said, I was going along and I was battling and I, I've been in ministry many years and I've been with Pastor Rodney and he, and he looked at me and he shouted, shut up! And I jolted and, and, and then I shut up. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Can you imagine that sometimes the best thing that can ever happen to you is to actually shut up? I just saw a man sitting there say, I've been praying for years. My wife would shut up, but she just will never shut up. Well, God's going to give you a miracle today, sir. <laughs> That's why I tell people all the time, you don't want your dogs at home to talk. If your dog spoke, they would say, I just wish they would shut up. I've heard the dog's looking for a place to commit suicide. <laughs> I have to live in this house. All I hear is shouting and moaning and grumbling and griping. Even the goldfish is looking for a way out of the bowl. The parrot is sitting there plucking feathers out saying, I don't know how I got into this house. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about people here at the River Church. You people are fine. It's all the people watching at home. Then he says, when you vow a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou vow. Now, what are you talking about, Pastor? Well, our vow is our commitment. That's why next week I want to re you know, renew our vow, because we made that commitment all those years ago. People make a marriage commitment to say, I do, and then they don't. But when you say I do, it's not for only when things are going well, it's through all that life has to throw at you. Which how I many know, life can throw many things at you. Are you with me? I mean, you could walk out of here today and a bird flying over your head drops something. You go, thank you. 
That's the worst thing to be on the beach around a bunch of seagulls. Because, you know, when they let things go, it's not, you know, it's like an offering. <laughs> Somebody said, you have sunscreen on your face. Uh, no, that's not sunscreen. That's a seagull. And his name wasn't Nelson. Somebody said, why did you have to bring that up? Because there are probably going to be a couple of birds try to drop some things on you this week. Are you with me? Amen. Well, don't let that ruin you. Amen. Somebody said, but pastor, I just had my head done. It's okay. You gotta, <laughs> it'll, it'll be okay. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I said, it's going to be fine. The Lord is with you. So you make that commitment. When I held my daughter in my arms on Christmas Day 18 years ago and made a vow, I vow a hundred million souls and a billion dollars into world missions. I made the vow. There, there is nothing that can change that. Now, people that watch me go, that guy's crazy. He thinks they're going to get a hundred million souls. Well, we're on our way, 37 million, and they're coming in. Can you say amen? Well, he thinks they're going to put a billion dollars into world missions. Well, we're on our way. Can you say amen? You know, let me, let me show you how easy this is. So you raise up 300 billionaires. Are you with me? In 20 minutes, you can have 100 million. You do that 10 times, what does that work out to? Well, look, we will, we will do what God has called us to do. We will accomplish right here from the River Church. We will accomplish all that heaven has planned. One more time, he's going to shake the nation of the earth. One more time, we're going to see the gospel open up for the nation of the earth. The devil has shot himself in the foot. He overplayed his hand. He wanted to lock everything down, but he couldn't. And he's not going to be able to. As long as we are here, as long as we make the stand, can you say amen? As long as we obey the Holy Ghost, the devil can't stop the church. The church triumphant shall stand. The enemy is not going to stop your business. He's not going to stop you from functioning. In actual fact, God's going to give you new businesses. God's going to give you creative ideas. God's going to give you witty inventions and things that are going to put you on the cutting edge. 21st century technology. Can you say amen? New opportunities, new ways of doing things, innovative ways that's going to impact many people and touch many people's lives. That if Jesus tarries 50 years from now, they'll say there were some people that lived back in 2021 and they jumped in at the right moment, at the right time. Right now we're living in what is called the transference of wealth and it's taking place and I believe that it shall come in the hands of God's people for the funding of the end time harvest. Can you say amen? And that's why heaven's hand is upon your life. It doesn't matter. Somebody said, what about my education? It doesn't matter about all that stuff. It doesn't matter about where you live, what location, what nationality, where you from, what passport you have, what access you have to this person or that person. You already have access to Jesus. You have already access to his word. You have access to that name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. You have access to the Holy Ghost and power the mighty third person of the Godhead that comes to live on the inside of you that will lead you and guide you every single day. When you go from this place tomorrow, regardless of what the enemy has planned, God has a way through. The Lord will bring you through. God will take you through to the other side. Between now and next Sunday, there will be victory upon victory upon victory upon victory, breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord for the River Church. Now, if you're visiting from another place, just smile real, smile real big, act like everybody else and nobody will know that you're a visitor. But if you sit like this, everybody will know you're a visitor.
So when you put your eyes on Jesus and you keep your focus on him, you might not know how God's going to bring everything to pass. It doesn't really matter. You leave that to him and you rejoice. You rejoice. And when stuff comes out of the blue that is a suddenly in the wrong way, just laugh. Just laugh. Don't, don't let it get you down. All I can tell you is you're going to be in a better position than you were before. Because that's the way the Lord does it. All the time. All the time. All the time he comes and he delivers his people. Hallelujah. So he says, better it is that thou should not vow than thou should vow and not pay it. In other words, whatever you have purposed in your heart to do, stay with that. Just stay committed to that. And then he goes on to say, yeah, suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin. Neither say before the angel, it was an error. Wherefore God should be angry at your voice and destroy the work of your hands. In other words, when you speak words that are contrary to what the scripture has declared over your life, the angels, they basically can't do anything. Angels, remember, are working on your behalf right now. Angels are not little fat babies with diapers on, fly around with a bow and arrow at, the, at, at, at Valentine's Day to put a cupid heart through somebody. Angels are heavenly beings that the Bible says are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to and on behalf of those that are heirs of salvation. So the angels of heaven are working on your behalf even now for the, even this upcoming week. Angels are working. Angels are working right now to bring in the provision. Angels are working right now to bring in the money. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when your mouth speaks that which is contrary to what the word of God declares, the angels, you know, they kind of just step back. They're not able to operate because they operate according to the word of the Lord. And then the demonic forces go, ooh, we can do it now. Let's go right in. We can come in. We can, we can function. We can come and we can steal. We can take. We can rob from them. And you have to say, absolutely not. You'll not touch the house. You'll not touch this. You'll not touch. And even whatever you have touched, you're going to pay for that. Let me tell you right now. I'm going to come out better on the other side of this thing. Yeah, you thought you were coming here to destroy it. God's about to create a supernatural testimony that's going to be a sign and a wonder for many to see the hand of God and the glory of God. How many have already seen that take place? Something that looked impossible and then the Lord turned it right around and now you're in a better place than you were before. Hallelujah. And God just doesn't do it once. He'll do it again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. Because that's what he does. I said, that's what he does. And whatever he does, he does well. He does all things well. Remember last week I told you he, he'll do just like he said he would. He's good. He's good. He'll do just like he said he would. He's good. He's good. He'll do just like he said he would. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. He'll do just like he said he would. He's good. And he'll do it again and, and again and again and again. You will not die before your time. Your life will not be cut off suddenly. 
God will make a way for you where there is no way. Furnish a table in the wilderness. Make the crooked path straight. I prophesy over you that this next week shall be a week of increase, a week of supernatural blessing, a week of heaven's grace and glory coming upon you. You shall have a blessed Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday and a Friday and a Saturday. Between now and next Sunday shall be supernatural acceleration and increase and multiplication heaven's rain upon your life everything you touch multiply yeah. hallelujah hallelujah glory a Dios la palabra de Dios You might be here and say, oh, they're crazy. They're great. That's fine. That's fine. You, you're entitled to your opinion. But whose report are you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe the word of the Lord. Like David said, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord is with you. And he's with you strong. You that are watching in your homes, this week shall be a week of miracles for you. This week shall be a week where mountains will be moved out of the way. Circumstances that look bleak, those dark clouds that looked tumultuous shall be moved out of the way and you shall come through the other side with great victory, great victory, supernatural victory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Property, homes will come into your hand. Houses you didn't build, land, land, acreage, new businesses, new companies, money coming to you supernaturally. A very distant relative that you didn't know <laughs> died and left something for you. <laughs> you have no clue what God's gonna do. You dig in your backyard and you strike oil. Hallelujah. And you and granny can move to Hollywood. No, I'm just teasing you. But you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the subtleties of God. I'm talking about divine supernatural intervention. Somebody said, Pastor, you can't believe for this every single week. Uh, I read the Bible. Yes, we can believe for this every single week. We can expect we can expect the supernatural divine intervention of God like miracles like the sun and the moon standing still like the water party where you walk through on dry ground where the enemy is buried beneath the waves behind you can you say amen when God delivers you with a strong and a mighty hand stand still and see the salvation of God hallelujah for oh, this will close out as a September to remember. And then you better get ready for October. Hallelujah. 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 Gloria a Dios. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No, no weapon. Even now, God is dealing with your enemies. Even now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The scripture declares, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. We were like them that dream. I must be dreaming. I must be dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. 
<laughs> and our tongue was singing. I'm singing in the rain, I'm singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling, I'm happy again. It's the rain of heaven to come upon you. The blessing of heaven upon your life. The blessing of heaven. Oh, I preach myself happy. Let me tell you right now. I'm glad I came this morning. I'm glad I came this morning. I feel it here. I feel it so strong today. I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Let it rain down. Rain down on everybody in the house. Let it rain down. Let it rain down on everyone on this field here. Hallelujah. Glory. Don't sit here and try to work out how God's going to do it. Somebody said, what was that? It's called a Holy Ghost body slam. That's what it is. If you don't have an anointing, don't worry. You, you, all you do is knock people over. <laughs> ah! Hallelujah. Glory. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Glory to God. There was a collision, a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel, I feel it all over me. I feel it all over. I feel it all over me. Don't, don't sit and worry about the critics. Don't sorry, sit and worry about the naysayer and the gainsayer. Grab a hold of the word of the Lord here today. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Grab a hold of the word of the Lord. Grab a hold of the word of the Lord today. Grab a hold of the word of the Lord. Grab a hold of the word of the Lord. Grab a hold of the word of the Lord. Grab a hold of the word of the Lord. Grab a hold of the word of the Lord. Hey! So prakamba rakata tareko pai. So prakata repo satareko. Hallelujah. Right now, chains are being broken. Right now, chains are being broken. <laughs> liberty, 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 liberty. See, when it comes on the inside of you, you carry it everywhere you go. Then everything outside has to change according to what is on the inside of you. Can you say amen? So houses come into your hands, supernatural. Land, property, acreage, much acreage. Vehicles. Planes, trains, automobiles, buses, trucks, boats, ships. (laughs) 
So, Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you that every head in this great pavilion is anointed and every cup filled to the top, that this shall be a supernatural week, that even by Tuesday, people will go, wow. Wednesday, they'll, they'll just shake the head. They'll see the hand of the Lord. Thursday and Friday, Saturday, and then by next Sunday, we'll celebrate. We'll celebrate your goodness and your grace. Multiply even that which is sown today. Cause a hundredfold to be made manifest in their life over the seed sown today. We pray this now in Jesus' name. En el nombre de Jesús. And everyone said, Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.